So hello YouTube. I actually just wanted to get on because this video um, is going to be strictly for mothers. Um, if you're not a mother, I am not saying that you have to log off because I'm sure you have a cousin, a sister, um, you may have a child's mother or wife, someone who could benefit from this. So if this is some information that you feel like you can write down, if you get into the video and you realize like, man, I'll share that with someone. Um, I believe that could be a blessing to someone. Um, once again, this is not the end all be all. These are just tips and things that I'm learning as a mother, as a wife, as a woman, as a daughter, um, that I wanted to share with anyone who's just really, you know, willing to receive it. So, um, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I just want to start off by first saying that one of the most rewarding honors and duties that God could have given me next to being a wife is a mother. Um, I get to oversee. I get to nurture, I get to love, I get to cultivate, I get to encourage. I just get to be everything that I had for myself or I wish I had. You know, I get to be that person who gets to do all the things that I feel, and catch that word, I feel, is necessary with the partnering of what God has given me for my individual journey as a mother, aside from what I was taught, aside from what I learned um, from just watching other people. It doesn't have to necessarily be my mom. It could have been another household. It could have been an aunt. It could have been a cousin, just anyone, you know. God has a canvas and it's all going to be painted in how he sees fit for my family, for my life, and for my children. So, um, I want to say that. And also, as a mother, you get to smack. Yep. You get to snack. You get to have an excuse for eating snacks. Because sometimes, you know, you probably shouldn't snack, but... If your kids are eating it, why not eat along with them? So that's another great thing about being a mother. Um, and like I said, I'm just watching them grow. You know, watching them grow, sitting back like, man, these kids were just like this small, not like this big. And these kids were just like once saying like goo goo. No, let's let's be honest. None of our kids came on saying goo goo gaga. They might have said some stuff, but it was goo goo gaga. But they were saying, you know, a lot of gibberish and all their composing whole sentences and they make sense and I can understand them and it's just the joy of being a mother and so I want you to start off by saying like if you're a mother you have everything to be excited for like it's just the most beautiful thing that God could have ever given us right like it's just beautiful in itself like I'm a mom you know soccer mom chili mom my mom mom just get to put mom after everything no I'm just playing okay I took way too long on that but you get the point you get the point we love being a mom like we just love being a mom okay and so one thing that I'm learning is as a mom is that a mom's job is very challenging as much as it's rewarding it's also challenging because sometimes you look at your children and you have to take account for some of the things that they've learned some of the behaviors that they're having, they're behaving as, um, you just have to be accountable. And it, it may not be a direct shot. It could be, you know, maybe what they learn on TV. Um, and just different things like where I'm held accountable. And that's the part where I need God the most. I feel like being a mom has made me seek God more than I've ever sought him in my whole entire life because I know that I'm responsible for these little human beings and that what I say to them they'll take heed to but most importantly how I behave in front of them is what they'll take heed to you know I can tell my child don't do x y and z but if they see me do it that challenge and that wrestle in their mind is going to be well you did it and at that point 
how can you argue with that? That's the truth, right? So that's the part where, like I say, is challenging because it takes a very mature person to understand that there's some areas in our lives that we may need to heal in order to be the best version in front of our children or we may need to heal in order not to pass certain things down to our children and so that's what i want to talk about my journey what i've learned what god has given to me so god dropped this word on me um right after church i was sitting on the couch with my daughter because she had a book she got a book from school and so thanks that was my computer i'm sorry guys um she was on the couch with her book and i sat down underestimating the task i think as most moms we can do that like i know what workload i have mentally i have to do this 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 and this but when you sit down with a book and you're sitting down with your kindergartner you already know that's going to take some attention some patience and some time so um yeah so we sit down and we're going through the book and i find myself getting impatient right and it's not her fault it's not her fault that i have a lot that i have to do and i sat down as if she was just going to fly through this book and that it wouldn't take some more patience and some more time and um I found myself apologizing within the first five minutes. I had to hold myself accountable and say, I apologize. You aren't supposed to know this, you know? And if you do know this, it's okay to keep practicing until you get it better or you, you know, you make your own progress. Because, you know, it's words that I know we've went over. So I'm assuming, I'm assuming you know she's gonna just catch on because these are sight words we've been studying and then I found myself just realizing like wow this is an area of my life right now that I need to work on you know as an author an entrepreneur a mom a wife in all the different hats that I wear sometimes I can have a mental overload like I have so much on my mind that in the times where I just need to be subtle patient and treat the ch my children in the way that they should be treated, which is delicate. I'm like rushing and patient. Um, I'm abrasive. I'm like, but you know this, you get it. Like, what are you doing? You know, and that's not that's not beneficial, nor is that you know helpful to the development of children. And so I just, like I said, I just I had to be accountable. And so God just gave me these words, and I'm just like, I need to share this with another mother. Because I'm not the only mother out here. And I mean, if if this ain't your thing and you just acting like you just got it all together, you can just, you know, bypass, sidestep everything I'm saying. But if you're willing and open to receive what I'm saying, like, you know what? She right. I do that. Or that's some, somewhat sound like my home, you know, or my household with my children, then this is your video. So um, I say all that to say. God gave me this first tip as a mom to take note that apologizing to your children is the best thing you could ever do. And starting off young, as young as they can comprehend what I apologize, forgive me, sorry means, it's even better. One thing I am so grateful for in the home that I grew up in my mother was so transparent she was so raw she was so honest and for the things that she did not know my mother would apologize if she felt like she got it wrong you know as a child i don't remember the specifics as far as what it was but i can name or i can just count on i can't even count on my hands i'll be honest with you there were numerous times where my mother said I apologize and I received it okay um, another thing she said that I feel like falls in line with I apologize is I don't know you know sometimes we don't know the answers and sometimes we can mislead our children by giving them what we think we know 
or what our models modeled in front of us however we may have not even accepted it when we were kids maybe we even thought this doesn't feel right this doesn't sound right you know and being accountable and saying those two things saying I don't know and I apologize and one thing I can say that helped me which is why I love that I gained that from my mother is that when I look at my children now and I see those big eyes that look up at me I mean, I'm talking about which way to turn. I'm the, the, the navigation system. How to respond. I am the demonstration. I'm everything that they look up to. I have to remember in the times where I don't have the answers, I can say that. And where I gained the most respect from my mom is that when she said it, I gained more respect for her when I found her out seeking. You know, it's like... Man, mama says she didn't know. However, I see the love she has for me and just the way she's behaving, like how she's going out to find the answers for the things she don't know. And so that was one thing that um, the Lord dropped on me first was get conditioned to understand that you'll be apologizing to your children. I mean, I know one thing that I'm not big on and I mean... I'm telling you, I ain't big on it. I do not like when the Bible is manipulated against children. I if there is this scripture and I do not know it like um verbatim. I will have to probably insert that, but I will paraphrase it. But it it's the honor your mother and father. I believe that a child should honor their mother and father and I also believe that a father and mother should also honor their children it is a privilege to be able to receive these gifts from heaven and it is a privilege and an honor to be able to oversee these children and so I want my children to feel the respect from me as much as I am looking for them to respect me as well I want them to feel the respect coming from their mother. I want them to know that I will never provoke you. I will never manipulate you. I will never do anything that could cause harm to you as I am expecting you to also respect me in the way that God has given me the opportunity to be your earthly angel, the one who oversees you, the one who protects you, nurtures you, loves you, guides you, and leads you. And so... That is the one scripture that the Lord just changed and shifted from my household. I know a lot of us have grown up hearing that. Um, maybe in certain settings and times, it could have been misconstrued. It could have been used as a manipulative tactic. It could have been used as a tool that God didn't intend it for. Um or a weapon, let me use that word, not a tool, but a weapon that God didn't use it for. And I don't agree with that. Um, I also like to read the end of scriptures, which it, it goes straight into, and parents don't provoke your children. I won't provoke you to anger. And when I think about provoke, um, I think about provoking is almost like I'm manipulating you, okay? So I'm causing you to anger in a way that is dishonorable and it's not honorable in the way that God wants me to look over his children look after his children and so I want to say that as well I want to add that in where um God gave me that layer with my own children um because you know I've heard it all my life I know a lot of you also heard that same scripture and I think it's time to bring truth to what you know is our requirements what our duty is as parents I'm a parent as well and so I'm not saying this as just a daughter, as a niece, um, as anyone who heard that word or heard that scripture. I'm saying this as a mother, you know. And so that is another key thing the Lord gave me. The second thing. Whoo! Okay. So this one is, this is the one. Um, be ready to unlearn a lot of things. The systems, the paradigms, the teachings, the methods that you were raised with and on may have not been right. 
and it will not be conducive for the family that you are raising. And so it is truly a time to seek God for the truth. And so that was one thing that I'm learning. The more I wake up, I learn so much about myself. The more I look at my children, I learn so much about myself. And I think it's so important to know that there were some things I needed to unlearn so that I can learn the right way in order to give my children the best chance at life possible. Me raising children is simply partnering with God to bring forth all the unique gifts that he's already placed inside of them. The things that I'm cultivating as a mother are gifts that God has already put inside of them. And so it takes a very strong, willing, and mature person to know that these children deserve the best chance at life and that us even unlearning some things can give them that advantage. And it's necessary. It's not to condemn anything. It's just to be truthful and say, there are some things that you have to unlearn in order to make sure you are the best mother you can possibly be to your children. The most healed version of who God created you to be, to be all that you are, all that you can be for your children. I want to go into some things that I had to unlearn. My parenting or my reprimand methods, okay? So I am not a mother who's quick to just hit my children. It actually, when, Jesus, I'm about to cry. Um, when I look into their eyes, I see the delicacy of their spirit. And as angry as I can become with my children at times when they do things that are just so defiant and just so unruly, I still am mindful of those eyes that are looking back at me, waiting to see how I'm about to respond. And that is all that I need in order for me to then take a deep breath and say, Lord, help me. What is the method for my child in this moment? Because I don't want to deal with this child that will soon be an adult that I am now or then at that point, I should say, having to reverse curses off of them. I'm having to go back and do damage control. And so that is very huge to me. Um, unlearning some things so that I don't teach them the wrong things. That I don't model the wrong things. Because one day they're going to be mothers. And they're going to remember what their mother did. And they're going to say, well, this is what my mother did. So I'm doing what my mother did. And we all sometimes may think some of those things work for us. But do they really? Some of the things that have been done, can we say that it was the right thing at the time or the wrong thing at the time? Or can we say that maybe it was the wrong thing that we had to correct and make it right? We had to make it right in our own mind. Like maybe it taught us in that moment. Like, you know, yeah, I got my whoop, my butt whoop, but that put me in order. And listen, I ain't talking about how nobody parent their kids. I'm just talking about me because, you know, pop pops and stuff like that. I get it. However, I don't feel like everything requires a beat. I don't even like the word beat. My kids don't even know the word whoopie. You get what I'm saying? And so that's why I guess I wanted to just share that layer is that I had to unlearn the methods on how I reprimand, you know, um, and that, that's, that's the, that's probably the biggest one. Another thing that God is teaching me is, well, okay. Another thing that being a mother revealed to me is that I have to be a very great listener. I have to discern a lot of things. I have to dissect. I have to decipher between what I'm hearing. And it literally takes the most open ears possible. Where I have to truly be 
in a position where I'm attentive and my attention is truly undivided. I have to make sure I'm paying attention to what my children are saying to me because their words, as the Bible says, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what is coming out of their mouth is in their heart. And I have to learn what's in their heart from what they're saying to me. God has been like truly um, showing me that I am not in control of everything. You know, my desire for my children was to homeschool them. I had this idea. I would put them in this. I would do this. However, it's God's plans and it's his orchestration because it's what he knows is best for his children. I'm his child, but my babies are his children too. And so I have to be mindful that listening is key. Not just listening to your children, but listening to what the Holy Spirit will give you for his children, right? And so um, that's really key. If I can take it, or if I can focus on the children and the listening aspect is just listening to the children. Um, the Lord has taught me that truly from the abundance of their heart, their mouth speaks. And I have to be attentive to what they're saying to me. I have to be mindful not to try to formulate their thoughts, not to rush them, because it is possible that sometimes as parents, we know the answers and we don't give them a chance to figure out the answer for themselves because we might rush them into trying to make it make sense. Whereas, you know, it's just okay to be patient with your children and just listen, you know, give them your undivided attention and be present in a moment don't think of anything else to do what you have what's, what's your line of duty for the day but just sit sit still allow them to vent and understand that every child is different you know i have daughters plural so what one needs from me another one may not and i have to make sure that i am using wisdom and my divine knowledge on how to parent each individual child because they're all uniquely different with all different personalities and I want to totally be able to give myself to my children in a way that best suits and benefits them and so that's something that I'm learning the more you know I'm dealing with having plural daughters um, that what one may need another one may be okay in that area however I have to use wisdom and I have to use discernment in quickly assessing when I need to take one and say, hey, mommy wants to sit you down and just have a conversation with you and just let them pour out their heart. You know, let their little mouths just run a mile a minute and listen and um, try not to focus on what's next. Like the fact that I got to go get up and cook dinner or maybe I want to go take a shower. I mean, and just truly just be attentive and be and be responsive. So like actually respond to them and let them engage like let them see me engaging in a conversation with them which just gives them value you know one thing about being a great listener is that those who know that you're listening have value they feel valued by you and so that's something that I have to really know that is so important with my girls is to make sure if I need to take one aside and say, hey, mommy just wants to know what's going on because now they're in school. You know, I once was homeschooling, which meant that more hours out of the day they were with me. And so now I have to be very vigilant. I have to be very attentive because they're outside of my care in a way that I'm not used to. And so the only way to understand what's going on outside of my care is to listen. And to let them know that I'm listening to them. I mean, making direct eye contact, put my phone down, you know, give them my undivided attention and truly just engage in just a one on one conversation or however many is sitting there at the time, because it just depends. You know, sometimes God will have me talking to all of them because it'll be just a blanket message that I need all of them to understand. And then sometimes God will just have me, you know, 
take one and we'll just go sit down and I'll let the other girls do what they got to do. And before you know it, she'll be back doing what they doing too. But I gave her that moment to unpack to me, release whatever is on their, on her heart and just lay down those burdens, you know, like just like my father in heaven, I go to to lay down my burdens. You know, I want my children to come and know that I'm a safe place for them to lay down their burdens as well. Another tip that I have gained is taking a deep breath. So, if you are a mother, or if you're anyone watching this video, we're about to take a deep breath. Because I don't know when's the last time you took a deep breath, but I know it is so vital. It's so vital in every area of our lives. I don't care if you're a mother, a father, a grandmother, um, an entrepreneur, you work a job, you go to school, whatever you do, taking a deep breath is necessary. Taking a deep breath for me has been that one thing that centers me. That is my moment to redirect, have to do a reroute. Or just really get in a moment where I am like, Lord, okay. Now I can respond. Now I can respond. Now I can say what it is you want me to say. Because before that deep breath, I probably would have yelled. I probably would have screamed. But deep breaths are so necessary. Please make sure if that is not something that you're used to doing, understand today, this day, you need to start. Start taking a deep breath. I don't care if it's before you walk in your kid's room. Open the door. I don't care if it's before you respond to what you see in your kid's room. Because that's another thing, moms. Let's just keep it real. Kids keeping their room clean is like not a thing, okay? And you don't know how many times I'm like, Whoop, wait a minute, I'm going in a room to say something, I'm like, Whoop, pop. can you guys please turn that TV off and get up in this room? It's so helpful. And so <laughs> I wanted to add that in. Please implement that in your daily lives to start taking deep breaths. Before you yell, you'll be surprised you may not even yell after that breath. Because if you're anything like me, um, one thing that I used to pray for as a child is I wanted to be subtle. I wanted to be gentle. I wanted to be soft-spoken. That was something... I truly pray to become okay and so what happens when I take a deep breath <laughs> is that I am able to become that person because taking a deep breath is not me right it's something that God has given to me in order for me to achieve the person I have been praying to him to become since I was a kid which is I'm like <sighs> okay and then it's like it alleviates stress and tension, heart issues, blood pressure issues. It's just all around the most perfect thing you could be doing as a mother. Deep breathing. It doesn't have to be one. It could be two. It could be three. Baby, you could take 10. I don't know how many you think you need. However many you think you need, you do what's best for you. But I tell you, I'm a... We gonna report back. I don't care if you come leave a comment. Just do something to let me know that you feel where I'm coming from. Try it out. Walk in your kid's room and just instead of yelling about the mess, take a deep breath. And I promise you, it's like you almost feel like you got the power back. Okay? Because when you're yelling and you screaming, sometimes you get to stuttering over your words. Sometimes you just your kids be looking at you like get it out and it's like when you take a deep breath you feel like you're in control okay that's what I feel like I'm in control so I'm just telling you 
try it out let me know how it works out i promise you i can almost bet you my last dollar you it's gonna work for you it's gonna be a good thing and so i mean for the just of everything that god gave me that pretty much summed it up i mean there's so many other tips but for the most part you know me being able to unlearn some things so that i can heal being accountable of who i am knowing that if i'm suffering from areas that i could possibly possibly be bleeding on my children that's going to impact them that's going to impact their right now and their future and i have to be in a position where if i need to go get some therapy if i need to go talk it over if i need to cry it out if i need to release it whatever i need to do i have to be in the best position possible to make sure i'm giving my children the best version of me possibly so um that's one thing just unlearning some things um as i stated before taking a deep breath okay our bodies are are really counting on us to inhale and exhale okay and just be mindful that you can get your power and control in just breathing before you respond taking a moment to just center yourself and say holy spirit speak to me in this moment because before this breath i was about to go off so now i'm trying something new and i know you're going to help me because this is by faith okay and you know we all know what faith does it pleases god so take a deep breath on faith and please him and see what he do for you that's another one and then another one was apologizing I'm not going in the order I spoke them. I'm just going ahead and just going off the dome like a rapper. I'm just playing. But um, taking a moment to apologize and just say, like, you know, I was wrong. Mommy was wrong. I apologize. Please forgive me. And loving on them. Making sure you love on them as you apologize. Let them feel that love as an action word right just let them feel that apology like i had it wrong and then doing what you got to do to figure out the answers if that's seeking the lord you know or if that's you know just talking it over with someone else and just letting them know like hey in this area i'm struggling with this how do you respond to your children when they do x y and z and then letting the Lord confirm in your spirit if that could work for you. Because not everybody's met this work. However, it's so many people I've listened to things that they do for their children. And I'm like, I'm going to try that out. I'm going to try that out. And see, and that's how me and my girls are. See, we're transparent and wrong. Okay? So, I was saying a heartbeat. Hey, sis, what you do when this happened? Because I need... And the beauty of that humility will bring so much help. So that's another thing. Um, patience. You know, taking time out to listen to them with patience. With a listening ear to hear what they're saying. Because they're so beautiful and small. And they just be talking. And be like, I don't know what you're talking about. But you really do if you listen. But it's just even cuter just to see their little mouth moving. And their little gestures and stuff. And it's just like, we're moms. So, um, yeah. I hope I cover all of them. If I didn't, I'll probably put them in the description box. So that those tips will be just be listed out. And like I said, this is not all of them. These are just the things that I'm personally learning. These are the things that God dropped on my spirit to share with you all. And I pray someone's blessed. And mama, I just want to let you know you are doing your thing. If you're in school, if you're working, if you're producing books, if you're running a business and you are still parenting, baby, you are super mom. And your children see that. They see that. That work ethic, they see that ambitious personality, that spirit of you that knows like mama's mama's gonna get it done. I don't know how she got it all done, but somehow she still got it done. I still ate good, I still was bathed good, I still got put in bed with my prayers, all of that. You know, just take a time out to relax, bask in this moment of being edified, pat yourself on the back. And just, just, just take it as some self-care. Like right now, 
This is a moment that I feel like we all should just go ahead and do something different as I was stating in the video earlier and just take a deep breath. So I'm gonna count to three and we're all just gonna practice taking a deep breath and just basking and inhaling all of this goodness that I just poured out of the encouragement of how great you are doing, how much you are have accomplished so far and how much further you have to go because baby we got a long way ahead of us raising these kids so these moments are necessary I don't care how how old your kids are right now take this moment and as we take this deep breath inhale all that goodness and when you exhale exhale all the worries and stresses of being a mom that you can't control but what God can help you with if you put it in his hands anyway that's all he wants. He just wants you to lay his children back at his feet. The children belong to God. And they are great gifts that come from above. Which means that God has all the answers. He's the beginning, the end, the author, the finisher. So that means everything in between. He knows. He's no, he knows what's best for his babies. And as long as you are seeking him, he will give you the solutions. So we're going to take a deep breath and then I'm going to close out in this video because I think it's necessary. And as I stated, inhale the goodness, exhale, exhale the worries. So on a count of three, one, two, three. And there it is. Thank you so much for logging on. And until next time, you mamas be blessed.